How's it going everyone? Dr. Ben Hassin here. It is another vlog day. Uh, it's Monday and you might be surprised like Ben, you're a resident physician. Why aren't you at work? You barely get weekends off, much less a Monday off. And turns out it, I, I got super, super lucky uh, because of how my schedule was adjusted between two different rotations. So if y'all have watched my last vlog, I probably just finished my psych emergency, the 1 to 11 p.m. shift rotation. So now I'm transitioning on to internal medicine, which will be my first internal medicine rotation of, of my first year in residency. But because of how the scheduling worked is that I got the weekend off because of the psych emergency rotation, but then I got the Monday off for the internal medicine rotation. So this is a rare three day weekend that I had and I tried to t make the most of it. I found out that I was gonna be doing a three day weekend like two days before uh, the rotation ended. So I didn't really have time to plan a quick trip anywhere, but I knew I wanted to make the most of the three day weekend. So yesterday I spent three hours of my life doing a seven mic hike seven seven mike <laughs> doing a seven mile hike at the sycamore trail in william umstead park in raleigh it was absolutely beautiful great views great nature it's fall so the leaves are falling it was it was so majestic to see like north carolina is the most beautiful state in the eastern part of the u.s like uh, hands down you can't beat that and near the end of our seven mile trek, okay, so just to caveat, Google says it's seven miles, but when we did our trackers, like both me and my co-resi that went with me, it was five miles, but it, it was a long hike. Near the end of it, we went by something called Chainsaw Log. It's a famous mural that a bunch of artists decided to take chainsaws and carve out animals within a downed tree and take a look at the footage that I got, holy moly, it was so well done. And I'm so glad I was able to go before the winter time and before it started raining a lot because murals like this, that's like carved into log and out in the open, they don't last very long. So the faster we got to see it, the better it was. And then, you know, like jerk faces come over and like mark the wood, but nobody has done that so far yet. And I was just wowed by the quality of of the artistry. So what am I doing this Monday? To be honest, I'm just actually catching up with chores. I got a little robot vacuum since the last vlog that I made. I realized that this is kind of essential, especially if you're a resident and you don't have time to do deep cleaning vacuum. So I have my super, super nice vacuum here, me being a weatherman. <laughs> and I use that for deep cleaning like once a month, but this one is maintenance for weekly vacuuming. So Mr. Mr. Jean Duque's fur isn't everywhere in the apartment and it is slightly more livable than what it used to be. I'm also going to spend most of today catching up on internal medicine topics, learning about my patients prior to starting tomorrow, just because it's been a while since I've done any form of internal medicine. I mean, I think the last time I did internal medicine, like hospital medicine medicine was in my, was my first rotation in my third year of medical school. And that was it really, because when I was in my fourth year, I mainly did outpatient clinic family medicine rather than internal medicine. So this will be interesting. I'm going to relearn how to manage heart failure, how to manage IV insulin, how to manage sepsis. I mean, just the most common medical uh, admission problems that people tend to get admitted to medicine for. Oh, by the way, uh, my co-resident who I went on the hike with because I gave her a ride to Raleigh because this hike was in Raleigh, which is about 20-ish miles away from Durham. I got one of like these little treats from a roommate that she has and they're so good. I don't know what they're called, but if y'all know, please let me know. I'm sure you can buy it at the store, but these were homemade by her roommate. And it's like, 
these little like scone like biscuity things with a Hershey kiss in the middle and like little orange specks and it has like this orangey flavor it's so good mm. and it's still so fresh mmm the little orange specks whatever they are I don't think it's zest that adds a really nice touch to them more mostly like carby sugary dessert mm. I'm gonna savor this last one hey y'all so I just got back from the gym it's about 11 p.m. and this is the first time in a week that I've been able to go to the gym because Oh my God, internal medicine is very, very difficult. I mean, I, I mean, it's a completely new rotation, completely outside my specialty focus, but it is super important in being a well-rounded doctor. Like at the end of the day, I am a doctor and I need to know how to manage all the things, all the general things that people deal with in a primary care slash acute uh, setting so it's been a very very humbling experience because I've been able to be at the bedside for very very sick patients when they need the care that they need whether it's you know an acute infection or dealing with heart failure dealing with a brain hemorrhage it's it's very 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 intense but wow I did not expect it to be this mentally hard to get used to. I mean, I, I started residency with one of the hardest rotations that people have said um, is very difficult. And I thought I was able to manage that pretty fine. But this has been even more <laughs> challenging to and uh, challenging for me because it kind of pushes me to my limits every day. And not just being emotionally there, but also knowing what to do but what i will say is that every day i'm getting more and more comfortable with learning the things that i need to in order to take care of people in the gen med service and also deal with the stressors of it i mean i was able to go to the gym today for once and be able to leave a little early earlier than what i was leaving i, I can't even tell y'all <laughs> how long it took me to get through the day and finish my notes and everything but I'm starting to become more and more efficient, more and more confident in my ability to take care of people in the hospital wards. So not just the not just the psych units in the hospital, but like the general medicine units where I have to consult cardiology, infectious disease, I mean, neurology, neurosurgery, everything that you can think of. Like we make a collective effort to help patients with multiple different medical conditions in addition to psychiatric conditions. So uh, it, it's, a, it's an experience that I won't ever get unless I specifically choose to be a general medicine hospitalist, which I don't think I will. Um, I just think I want to be more of a psychiatrist that practices both in an emergency, in a hospitalized, and in a community setting. So that's where I'm headed. And I'm still considering, I know I didn't match med psych, but I'm still considering on whether or not I want to pursue like a primary care specialty like family medicine or preventive medicine. But we're going to put a bookmark on that because I need to get through these four years of psychiatry residency as well. I will say that it is incredibly, incredibly humbling every single day when I go to work to be to have the privilege to take care of the people who come through the doors and I'm able to be their doctor. It is one of the most humbling experiences. All of us at one point in our lives will end up in the hospital and rely on a doctor to take care of us. Whether we like it or not, whether we like to go to the doctor or not, whether we like the institution of medicine or not, one day in our lives, that that's what I carry with me and I try my best to give every patient the dignity they deserve when they're under my care is that all of us will one day be in the position where I take care of my patients. So one day I will be that patient in the hospital. So that's the kind of respect and love that I try to give 
to every patient that I have. I don't care how stressed I am. I don't care like how many gray hairs I'm getting in residency. That is the priority. And being able, being having the privilege to take care of the patients that I have been taking care of has been so, so rewarding. It makes me think a lot about my own life and how I, when I get really sick and old one day, how I want to be taken care of and how we should cherish the moments that we have with the people that we love in the now because one day we won't have them anymore. Good morning, y'all. Oh my gosh, it is my first day off in seven days. I am so excited. I'm about to go do some chores, but I wanted to show y'all my fit for this fall it's my fall wa fall weather pumpkin spice inspired fit to be honest i didn't even really expect to dress like this i just put on a bunch of clothes and i was like hey look i'm really embracing the fall colors and i thought this how how coincidental that <laughs> it's fall weather right now and i got these muted browns and uh oranges as part of my errand fit when i go to costco today because uh we got to stock up some on some cottage cheese we got to stock up on snacks and we got to run to the gym because i haven't really been able to be consistent at the gym since i started this new rotation i was able to go um the day before yesterday because we got off early for the first time and so i'm gonna make the most of it and get as much of a workout in as possible because it seems like this month i'm not gonna get to most of my goals that i've been setting for myself it's more more so going to be a maintenance month for me so i wanted in this vlog to show you all some of the new things that i've been doing as far as my morning routine it's pretty much remained the same since i did one about last year when i first started vlogging but essentially, I still use a vitamin C serum in the morning. This is the one that I got recently. It's the Rock brand. And I found it to be quite, quite good. I, I like that it's a little jelly consistency. Like if you'll see, if I put a dollop in, which makes it super, super moisturizing. One problem I had with my old vitamin C serum is the fact that it wasn't as moisturizing. So I always had to buy an extra little hy hyaluronic acid on the side. Uh to make sure that my face doesn't get ashy throughout the day. So I just like put it in and then I just blend it into my face, let it dry up, you know, gotta be soft and supple. And it, it's pretty, it's pretty simple after that. So I wipe it all over my face, make sure I get my neck and then I am ready for the next step. So then I grab a little uh, water sprayer and spray my hair. It, it, my hair is super, super textured and wavy. I'm gifted with that kind of hair, but it makes me really prone to cowlicks and it makes me super, super prone to uh, having unruly hair. So after I spray it, I grab this thing that I bought from Amazon. It's literally a beanie but uh, I put it on my head and it kind of allows my hair to settle down from all the bed hair from the night before. So then after about 15 minutes having breakfast and changing into my work scrubs, uh, peep my new fit scrubs that are super muscle fit, I take the beanie off and look at how much my hair has settled down. I usually at this point add some sea salt spray to my hair, but I had already added that in the prior day and my hair was already pretty textured. Sea salt spray allows my hair to have a lot more texture and gives me a beachy look. I've updated my sunscreen routine. Even though I was using the Japanese sunscreen that didn't irritate my eyes as much, it still irritated my eyes at the end of a 16 hour shift. Eight hour shifts are fine, but I realized I was still getting burning eyes and it was making it really hard for me to concentrate at work. So I got this Neutrogena Beach Defense sunscreen stick. It was recommended in a Reddit post that I saw with people with burning eyes with any type of sunscreen who said that the sticks tend to be really good. So that I apply to my forehead and then I go back to the usual Nivea Super Water Gel a Milky Sunscreen. I apply uh, the two streak method that I saw on YouTube, this beauty guru do, and it's just like applying it to two fingertips and then just applying it to my face and neck. And it's very similar to my old routine. I just make sure I don't get any in the forehead so it doesn't melt down and get into uh, my eyes. The sunscreen stick has been a god bless to me um, because your boy has been struggling for quite some time. So 
that's pretty much it for the uh, sun care right now. And it's been really good for me. I don't think I'll be changing it uh, indefinitely for, for the very near future. And of course, I wanted to show you all all this beautiful texture in my hair. I'm really loving my curls lately. Good evening, y'all. So I just woke up from my nap after a day of post-call. So uh, the schedule for internal medicine is very different from what I had in previous ones. Before I did a lot of shift work. This one, the shifts differ on the type of day, whether or not you're taking new admits for patients versus looking at your old patients. So this was one of those days where I can get off a little early. So I went home and took a nap, but tomorrow is going to be a very interesting day because um, my leasing office is coming by to put in a new filter for the uh, for the AC and also do some pest control stuff and um, I think it's definitely needed in this apartment because I have walked into three times where a mouse has come and Jean-Luc has maimed it to death. Um, the other day I stepped on something squishy and I freaked out and I thought it was a mouse that Jean-Luc had killed and I was freaking out. I think what they're where they're coming from is from this attic right here. But luckily, because I have Jean-Luc, I actually haven't had that many, like, mice uh, in my apartment. I've only had three since, uh, and I've lived here for, like, maybe, like, five-ish months uh, by now. So, I didn't know this, but apparently North Carolina has a lot more mice than they have cockroaches. Because in Atlanta, I had a lot of big, big bugs. But here, I'm getting mice. Um which is more terrifying because I have to pick it up and throw it away once John Luke kills it. Uh, and I, I, I want to be really, really real with y'all. I'm not letting him kill it. I just wake up or come back from work and I see a dead mouse. But other than that, something that I need to fix before uh, leasing gets here tomorrow is the fact that a couple of nights ago, I heard like some creaking and a kind of noise. And usually uh, I attribute that to jean Luc jumping on something and falling off of it because he tends to have zoomies at night. But when I woke up the next day, what I saw was this little cabinet in the kitchen broke off. And there's no way jean Luc was able to do this. What's up, baby? Oh, no. He, he wants camera attention. Baby. Y'all, I swear I feed him. Um... <laughs> But he's like, pay attention to me, not the camera. Um, but for some reason, uh, this hinge kind of just flew off. Yeah, it just broke off this part right here. And that goes to show that uh, American cabinetry and everything else that I talked about in my move out vlog about how poorly, poorly designed everything is, is in fact real. So uh, I don't want to get dinged for this breaking off even though I had nothing to do with it. So I'm gonna drill this back in place and it should be pretty easy to do. But I'll show you all some other like stuff that I've noticed. Like this thing doesn't completely close all the way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We love to see it y'all. I pay $1,600 a month for this. That was a lot easier than I thought. Hey y'all, so I'm about to go to the gym, but uh, I thought this would be a great time to kind of talk about, you know, some of the talking head pieces I do. And today's topic of a discussion is, um, a couple of days ago, I was talking to someone and they were asking me what I like about psychiatry because in their mind, they could not imagine doing a uh, like career where you're talking to people who potentially could be violent towards you and potentially are going through a psychotic episode. And I, although although I thought the question was the way that they phrased the question was very very like ignorant, I also can understand that. In the general population's lens, there's a lot of stigma, there's a lot of fear 
And there's a lot of media misconceptions about people who go through psychosis. And I guess the one thing that I really want to talk about is the fact that most people who go through psychotic episodes are not consistently going through psychosis through the majority of their life. That is the one biggest misconception that I see time and time and again in the media and people's perceptions of those who have diagnoses like schizophrenia, diagnoses like major depressive disorder with uh, psychotic features. There's this assumption that these people, whenever they go through life, they will consistently be in a state of not adaptive behavior, which to me is a great disservice to the people who actually suffer from these conditions. And that's why I like I love being a psychiatrist because as someone who is very much like my, my cognitive function right now is very able-bodied or able-minded. <laughs> I guess that's a new word we can coin, but I'm a very able-minded person. I've never had an episode of psychosis. I would say the closest episode that I've had to something like that is that a couple of months ago, I think maybe around february of this year i had my first hypnagogic hallucination which means while i was waking up i experienced a hallucination where it felt very real but it only lasted about five to ten seconds but as someone who is able-minded it is my duty as a psychiatrist to advocate for my patients who go through episodes of disabled mindedness i guess <laughs> or i guess a more appropriate term would be socially non-adaptive mindedness and like i've said most people with a primary psychotic disorder or a diagnosis where there's episodes of psychosis are not at a consistent state where they are actively experiencing hallucinations or illusions or delusions most of the time these people whenever they have these episodes are going through an acute stressor whether or not it be an anniversary of a of the death of someone they loved or a traumatic anniversary or they're just going through something really really stressful and i know for the majority of people you've had a episode in your life where you were going through so much stress you had a breakdown i like to think of people with psychosis are those who when they go through these intense emotional stressful events in their lives their brain just cannot handle that stressor so they release inappropriate neurotransmitters leading to hallucinations and delusions so i think that's something that, um, that i really really want to emphasize is that we should never discriminate someone on whether or not they've been at institutionalized uh, at a, a psychiatric inpatient facility for some time. Uh, usually these, these are not permanent. Um, they get better in a couple of days to a couple of weeks and they're discharged with regular adaptive functioning. All they have to do is either one, if, if they've had a couple of episodes in their lives, they should be on medications to prevent future episodes and another thing i really want to emphasize is pe is people sometimes will never need medications after they have a psychotic episode usually after a first episode uh, depending on other factors that i look at clinically as a psychiatrist this is a lot to explain and i think most people won't understand unless you're in this field some people will only have one and never have one again or they'll have one and there'll be a couple of years before i have the second one at that point i really do something called risk stratification where i try to figure out whether or not they would benefit from continued use of uh, medications to uh, prevent any form of relapse so it just hurts me whenever i hear people like kind of disregard people with psychotic disorders as uh, those who do not deserve the same level of love and care as anybody else. And a lot of these patients have like medical issues too. And I think it would greatly benefit other people in other medical specialties or whether or not you're a social worker or even a restaurant worker who is taking care of someone to just have that humbleness and to have that care to understand that sometimes people are just not themselves and that we should practice forgiveness. I know sometimes when um, I've talked to people who, who have family members or friends who've gone, gone through episodes and have gotten violent or like verbally violent or said something very, very mean about themselves. And yes, it does hurt and you can acknowledge that it hurts and you can acknowledge that you may not be able to forgive this. But at the same time, I do emphasize practicing grace because when people are going through an episode like this, they are not themselves. Their brain has basically gone into overload and they are not who 
they want to be. I know that was a very, very long, long rant, but I genuinely feel for people who go through periods of their life where they have no control about of who they are. Can you imagine going through something like that? And then after you get better that your family members, your friends, people in the community, people on TV are making fun of people who've gone through something that you have, it's absolutely hurtful. And that's why I care so much about my patients. Good, beautiful morning, y'all. It is my first day off in seven days. It's a Wednesday and I got a lot of stuff to do. I'm gonna go to Around the World Market, which is the only, I think, Indian, South Asian style grocery store in within the, the near vicinity of, vicinity of me. So I'm running out. I ran out yesterday of ginger garlic paste. I was gonna cook last night after work to kind of meal prep some food. Couldn't do that because <laughs> I ran out of ginger garlic paste. And I'm gonna get some beef kima seasoning, which is, if you have never had beef kima, I highly recommend you try it at a, a South Asian restaurant, Bengali Indian style. And it's essentially just ground beef that's kind of mashed with the tomato paste and a bunch of different curry sauces. And ah, uh, it is so, so good. I'm also gonna hit the gym while I have some time off. And this is my very, very cute gym fit for today. We're doing shoulders and abs today and I always try to be a bit more functional whenever I have a shoulders and abs day. So I tuck in my shirt because I'd be, I'd be hanging on the bar and going upside down and my shirt keeps riding up in the past whenever I never tucked in my shirt. So I just got back from the gym and around the world market. Got a lot of goodies. I'm so excited, but I wanted to share some stuff with y'all. So I got my typical Sean Cindy Biryani uh, seasoning. This is my favorite biryani seasoning. Seasoning. I've tried the other ones, but this is the this is the best one that I've uh, had. I think I heard maintenance outside. That's not for me. Uh, and then I got the Kima one that I was planning on getting. The packaging is different now. But hopefully, uh, it tastes just as good. And then I got my ginger garlic paste, which this time I'm trying the Swag brand. I've heard better reviews about it. Like it's more flavorful. It's more gingery. So I want to give this one a, a shot because this one's, I think I've been avoiding this one because it's been like $2 more expensive than all the other brands, but it looks Looks really good. Can't wait to try it. Ooh, I can smell it <laughs> from the jar and it's like packaged up. And then the last thing I wanted to share with y'all is that I often, damn, do y'all hear that? <laughs> um, last thing I wanted to share with y'all are these amazing malt chocolates. I almost never find them at the store here in the US. Sometimes at the international farmer's market, I'll find them. But if you like Whoppers, these are like 10 times better. I think Maltesers are only sold in the in Europe. So Europe brand, let me see. Oh. Hmm. I don't know what the original brand of Maltesers are, but these are absolutely phenomenal. Like. The one thing that I don't like about American chocolate is American chocolate tastes like garbage. <laughs> it's usually a ton of sugar and the chocolate quality is not creamy. It's like cheap chocolate. You can definitely tell that they skimped on quality chocolate sources. But these one, it's like, if you like Kinder eggs or Kinder candy or any type of like German candy, if you've had candy from Aldi, it's like that coated in a uh, Whopper and it's fantastic. I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna have some. Mmm. And the malt, that's a true malt right there. It's super creamy, super delicious, and it's not too sweet. It's sweet, but not so sweet that it ruins my mouth. So good. Anyways, y'all, I think I'm going to end the vlog here. I'm going to settle down for the rest of my day off. I have dinner plans with someone later tonight, so I'm going to get super cute. 
freshen up, get some work done, get some studying done because it's incredibly hard to study while you're at work. So I try to get as much knowledge in as much as possible whenever uh, I have a day off. And in this rotation, it's few and far between. So I'll catch you all in the next one. Mwah. This is Dr. Ben.